Hello and welcome to this video. So we're going to make a start on the live trading bot. On the GitHub repo, which is uh, linked in this video in the description, somewhere all the way down the page, you'll find there's a folder called Trading Bot Starter. Please grab the files that are inside here and put them in a new folder somewhere because we're going to start from a new project just like we did really with the web dash so we can keep things separate. Now once you've done that you should have a file, I've got one here, a trading bot starter, and in there you probably won't have a pycache yet but you should have the devs.py, oenda.py, requirements.txt and utils.py. Please go ahead create the virtual environment as usual, install the packages inside requirements.txt, I'll assume that's familiar by now. And I've got a pycache, you won't because I've just run a couple of files in here already. So to test everything's working I'm just going to run python oandapi.py and what you should get out of there, if I just uh, zoom out a little bit, is you should get a printout of a data frame of 10 candles, which suggests then that everything should be working. So into the code, it should be fairly familiar. We've got our utils with the UTC functions. We've got our devs.py and our Rwanda API. Now inside devs.py, the code is the same as it was before, apart from adding this content type application slash JSON. That's because we're now going to be posting things when we create trades and therefore we need to tell the server what kind of content we're sending. And this is part of the documentation of the Oanda API, so we'll do it. And then inside Oanda API, I've restructured things just slightly to make things a little bit easier. So now inside the API, we have a function called make request. And this function here, I'll just scroll a little bit there, takes in some parameters. So what kind of request we're doing. We've only been doing get requests so far. Takes in headers, parameters, things like that. And basically makes a request for us based on whatever verb we send in. So a bit further down we have fetch instruments, which you know, and you can see how we're using the make request here, where we're getting the status code and any data that came from the request just by simply calling the make request with the URL. Then we have our get instruments data frame, the fetch candles, and the candles to data frame. So everything is much the same as before. So what I'd like to do in this video then is actually make a trade. So to do that the first thing is to make a new file and we'll call this runner.py. Now we're just going to use this file for a little bit of testing and not really anything else. So I'm going to import the Oanda API, then we'll create ourselves a new instance of the Oanda API and then just write a rough little infinite while loop, which is always a bad idea, and ask for a command to be entered. And what we're going to say then is that if the command is equal to t, then we're going to make a trade, I'll put pass, and otherwise we'll say if the command is equal to q, to quit, then we'll just break out of this loop. And over the next few videos I just want to build this little script out for some testing of making, closing trades, and things like that. One thing we can do is we can just write make a trade inside here just so that we know things are going on and then back inside the console I'm just going to run that script and check there aren't any uh, silly errors so if I make a command and do a capital T we make a trade and a Q should quit. So going into making a trade if I go on the Oanda developer documentation we haven't been here for a while there's a section in the endpoints called orders and the order endpoint is what you use actually to place a trade. The way it's done you can see here the request is it tells us in the documentation that we need a body like so so an object here and then we have a key in that called order and then that has a value which is an order request. So let's click on this link order request and have a look at that. And you can see that it says that it's a base specification and then depending on what we want to do we can do various types of order requests. So we've got a market order request where we have the type of order, the instrument, the units, the time in force, we'll always leave that as FOK. Um, you can specify price bounds, position fills, there's all sorts of complicated stuff you can do here, most of which we're not going to lose. Then we've got limit order requests, we've got stop order requests, and also take profit order requests, and stop loss order requests, and all sorts of things like that which you can, uh, you can read. Going back to the order endpoint then, we're just going to have a look at what we actually need to do to make one. And we can see some examples down here. The first thing to note probably is that the 201 is the actual order was created as specified. So we're looking for a status code of 201 when we actually create our trade, otherwise things have gone wrong. And we're also making a post. Until now we've always been making GET requests, now we're making a post. And as usual the documentation is really good, it provides us with loads of different examples. So here we have like a limit order for a sell of 1000 US Canadian units at a certain price with a stop loss and take profit and blah blah blah. So in this video we're going to keep things simple, we're going to buy 100 units of the Euro US dollar 
as is done here. So we can see that we have a request and we need to send some data with this request and we need to send, as we saw above, one key order and in there we need to provide some values. So we've got the units, the instrument, time in force, FOK, type it to market order and default position fill. And for this course we're not going to play around with too many of these kind of settings inside here. I'll leave that to much more experienced people than me. So back into the code, I'm inside the oanderapi.py file. I'm going to scroll down to where we're above this class method of candles to data frame. And we're going to write a new function, def place trade self pair and units. And all we need is the URL. So going back to the documentation, you'll remember that this is the URL here, the v3 accounts, then the account ID, and then forward slash orders. So this is the kind of thing we've seen many times before. We build up the URL using the defs, and we have our accounts, the account ID, and then forward slash orders. The next thing is we need to send in some data, which we've already seen as well. So in the documentation, I'm just going to be naughty and copy everything inside this order key here. And then back in the code, I'm just going to paste that there and tab it all along a bit. So for the units, we want the units as they are here. And the way you denote a buy or a sell is by having positive or negative units. The instrument then will be our pair and we'll leave everything else exactly as it is here. So now we have our data set up and our URL, what we need is actually to make the request. So we're going to say status code and JSON data is equal to self dot make request. The URL, the verb is post. The data is JSON dot dump string data and the code for OK is 201. Now the only slightly confusing thing here might be this JSON dot dump string data. If I just go all the way up to the top here, you'll see we're importing JSON. And we need to send the request or the data of our request as JSON. So therefore we're converting our data here into a JSON string. And you remember that in defs we've got the header set up to tell it that we're sending JSON data. So if everything runs well here, we should get a 201 back as our status code. Now when we do get that back, we get a lot of information with it. So for now, let's just have a look at printing whatever the JSON data is that actually comes back from the request. So back in runner.py, below the print make a trade, we'll actually place a trade. So we're going to say API and then place trade. The pair can be Euro US dollar and let's place 1000 units. So we're going to make a buy of 1000 units. Now one of the things I have done already is I've gone to trade.oanda.com. I've logged in on my practice account so that I can actually see down the bottom here the trade when it's opened or it's hopefully opened anyway. So I'd recommend you do that so you can actually see the trade. And now just double checking what we're doing. We're calling this place trade function. We have our pair euro US dollar, a thousand units, which is a buy. If I go into the Oanda API, we have our pair, our units. We set up our data here. And all being well, we should get a load of information back as our JSON data. So into the console, I'm going to type python runner.py and then t. And we can see that we get an object back with a lot of information inside. We can also see on Oanda that I've now got a buy of euro US dollar, a thousand units, long position, the margin, etc. And the current performance of the trade, which due to the spread is red. One thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to keep track of the ID of the trade. And the reason for this is we might want to do things with it. Our bot will need to be aware of the trade. Maybe you want to make a database and store different things. So we want to extract some information from the trade we've made here. And you can see that we get back quite a big object with a lot of information. Going to the Oanda documentation, it gives us an example of a response body here. And we can see that we get things a little bit uh, easier from the formatting and we can find the information we need. So you get two things here. You get a created transaction. So when the order is actually created and the information, and then you get when the order was filled and the exact time that the order was filled. Because remember, we create and then fill the order. And it's inside here that I want to get some of the information. And what I particularly want is this trade ID here, which is 6368 in my case. And it's under the key trade opened. And that is under the key order fill transaction and that is in the response body. So to get the ID, we need to go order fill transaction, trade opened and then trade ID. So what we'll do then instead of printing the JSON data is we'll say if order fill transaction is in our JSON data and trade opened is in JSON data, then we can return an integer of 
the JSON data, order fill transaction, trade opened, and trade ID. Now, why have I gone through these steps here? Why don't I just directly do this line here? Well, in my experience using the under API, sometimes things go wrong when making the trade. So they get created, but they never get filled and various things like that. And sometimes you get partial information back. So I always like to check that the keys we want are actually present. And if they are, then I know I can grab the trade ID. If they're not, then I know that something's gone wrong whilst making the trades, even though my status code might well be a 201 that I got back. It's just dawned on me we're not checking actually if the status code is a 201 here before we do all this checking. It doesn't matter for now, we can uh, put that in later on. But if uh, things have gone wrong there and uh, we haven't actually got the order fill transaction, then we can return none from the trade. So going back into runner.py, what we can now do is we can store our trade ID by making the call to place trade. So I'll just save that and we can rerun the script and have a look at that. One thing we do need to do, however, is probably print the trade ID so that we've actually got some evidence that's actually happened. And I have to confess, I've just edited this because I missed that. So I'm coming back to do this. So we'll do print trade ID. And now back in the console, we should be able to run Python runner.py and then enter a command, which is T. And now we can see we've got, in my case, trade ID 33 back. So we've made the trade with the ID 33. And if I go back to the Oanda console here, you can see that I've got the trade ID number 33 open here. And all the original trade is seven pips up. Isn't that a, a turn up for the books? Okay, then. So I'm going to close these trades now just uh, from the web app here. We'll deal with how to close them in later videos. But for this video, that's it. We've made the first step towards making an automated trading bot. And that is actually to place a trade using the Oanda API. So comments, questions, welcome as always uh, on the video via email or whatever. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.